there, and uh, thanks for agreeing to talk to me today. This You're is very welcome, ah, that's Francis. A, absolutely brilliant. So this is Fianta, and he's a brilliant musician, and uh, has a lot of enjoyable background on the music front. Together, the very first um, recording of your album was done in Windy's Field back in Suffolk. Yeah, they all started in at Windy. <laughs> And uh, there was a great sort of like <laughs> background track to it. Do you yeah. think that added a little something? Pardon? Do you think that added something? You mean the wind yeah. in the back? The wind. Oh, yeah, well, I suppose. Yeah, it was, um, there was lots of ideas a swirling about. Wasn't there? And uh, it was good to put it down. Those initial recordings were good to get them down to kind of hear how the thing was evolving. Yes. And then it kind of... Build on that. We built on that, yeah. God knows. And uh, so if you were going to say how you've used, uh, well, maybe you haven't actually used your album as a tool for teaching, but within each of those songs on the album, and we could, we could talk kind of separately in an, on an audio way to, um, and play those songs, but if you were going to say... What inspired that, that album? What were you working through? There seemed to be a series of interesting kind of concepts that you were thinking about. Yeah. Well, um, not to put too fine a point on it, <laughs> working through depression, misery, boredom. <laughs> and you let all those things go brilliantly. Well, you know, I mean... 90% success rate? 90%, I don't know, maybe 1%. <laughs> I like it. Maybe so, 1%. I, I think um, the great thing about the album was, I, I don't know, goals, is, is that a good way to put it? Is that, is that a good... A goal reach, do you mean? A, kind of setting the setting the, the best case scenario for yourself. What is it that you want? Yes. And I suppose... In the album, I was working through, well, here is the life that I had up to that time. And then really it was meeting people, particularly Eric Dowsett. Yes. I mean, there's no question about it. He, His particular teachings and his book, like his book, um, Loving Who Shows Up, Yes. was a big influence. And, of course, that's how I got to know you quite well as well, Frank, through our friends, as, yeah. as, as I call you now. Um, <laughs> yeah, so loving him workshops. shows up is a lovely idea of, of of just choosing to love who shows up as opposed to it might happening naturally. Eventually it happens naturally, I think, that you would love who shows up because you are maybe let go of your resistance. Yeah. And But to start with, it has to be almost a neutral practice, doesn't it, where you say, right, I'm going to choose to love who shows up and maybe listen to the lesson, or what would you say? How do you start to learn uh, love who shows up? Yeah, it's, I, I love these kind of concepts because it's really your perception of what, and we were talking about this earlier, your perception of what the person is saying. Loving who shows up. The only thing I can remember from those days <laughs> when I hear that is, are you, whatever is happening, whoever shows up, or whatever emotion shows up, or whatever situation is occurring in your life, that it's about nothing else other than your perception of that and your reaction to that. Yes. So loving who shows up, I think it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful concept, it's a wonderful name for a book, but to me, it boils down to, are you still centred on yourself? I don't mean that in a kind of selfish way, but... Are you still grounded? Are you still at ease? Are you still, are you still happy? Are you still present? I think is the best way mm. to put it. Are you still present, no matter what situation, no matter what emotion, no <sighs> matter what person? Then you're going to love everything. Every part of your life. You yeah. realize that really the only love that's possible is the love for yourself. Yes. Everything else flows then. Now, love. I, Again, I, I would have to say on that, if I can come in on that one, 
Because Actually, you haven't even long... gone out on it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, go on, no, go on. <laughs> Lovely. Um, I can't remember what I was going to say now. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, well, sure, maybe it'll come back. It's important uh, oh, it'll come back. Perfect. Uh, well, I was going to ask was, are you at the moment where you're at with your you know, life journey and understanding? Are you are you feeling it's about love in terms of really love as in gratitude or love as in compassion or energy as in a flow or understanding as an intellectual exercise? Because you've gone through all those. Yeah. Um, Kind of methods in a way. Well, we can. I can leave the intellectual side of it out in a way. For, I think it has some basis in form. Um, yeah, love is great. What were the others? Love is a great word. Yes. I, I think that um, I, I I go back to the point I was making about loving who shows up, whatever love is, um, and again, it's a perception that each that I think each person has, each person will come to their own understanding of what that means for them. Yes. But um, love, I don't, know, I don't know what to say really about it. It comes back, I think I'm kind of repeating myself at the moment. It comes back all the time to, like I suppose I have found out for sake of, of, of a better word, or learnt or explored love through relationships. Yeah. Obvious point, I suppose. And in the relationships, the thing about love that I continuously come back to all the time oh. is, am I dependent on the other person for some power, for some love, for some attention? You even get more basic for... Yeah, for their time, for their attention. Um, or can I can I relate to this person openly and freely without any desire to attain or anything avoid anything? Mm. Just total uh, total freedom. Self contained, almost. It almost a stra uh, um a journey towards total authenticity total within author yes. duality, and within the trying that uh, trying to have a, a real tangible connection. That is, um, I, I, so I thought you were maybe hiding from the camera. <laughs> suddenly got by. Suddenly got bashful. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, so the struggle for authenticity and to not lose. Use yourself. Lose. Struggle for authenticity. I love that. Yeah. Do you know, there's a there's a few words that always kind of strike me: truth and authenticity. Yeah. You know, I do think there, there's a couple of things that like that that keep me going. Do you yes. know, and I love those words, because when it's when the shit hits the fan and, you, and you are depressed and you're down and you don't know what the fuck is going on, um, truth and authenticity. Are you being true to yourself? Okay, maybe you've come across, maybe you've you're you're on the journey. Or, well, I, I won't speak in the third party. I'm on the journey, and I do still feel I'm on the journey. I do I do still feel I'm seeking something. Yes. I do. There's something in my being that says to me, "No, you're still there." At times, there's a growing awareness. Yes. And there's there there's growing there's a growing happiness, there's a growing contentment, there's a deepening of love. But there's something there that says that there are areas still unfulfilled or still unhappy. And it comes out in relationships. You know that you give, you lose your presence and your ground. You're still, you, that ability to lose presence and groundedness is still there. And Definitely. Happens. Uh, well, I would I like would to like say, to well, say what, what, the right. percentage of the time <laughs> And that's I'm only a mere eighty nine percent of the time, completely ungrounded. Out of notion whether I'm coming or going. Yeah, no, I I feel that part of my job on the planet is to remind people, uh, in who are on a conscious journey, that they are already there. 
Yes. Because that is a part that lots of people are forgetting in the massive distractions, yes. whether the main distractions for you and I of relationships, uh, for other people it's financial hardship, for other people it, you know, it's another set of argy-bargy that they're trying to deal with, you know, within the yeah, energetic spectrum. The stuff is, yeah. yeah. But, um, but actually, I believe, and we were saying before, that that's the mind playing up building your more more barriers yeah. whereas our job is constantly not just not to go back to being a student and to say no. okay i'm still seeking as much as to spend at least a part of every day um recognizing that you are there already even if you only have to kind of uh kind of fake it till you make it so you're you're you you think as if yeah. when you feel yeah. as if yeah, you know I, a lot I agree. I agree totally with you, and I think yeah, the word seeking in its sense can be a bit of a what's the word can be let yourself off the hook as well. Yes, I I do think it's an instantaneous thing, and it's much more. Maybe the line, and maybe this is the funny thing, and this and you know maybe this is the funny about the whole thing, the line between falling off and staying on the road, or on the wire or whatever it is, whichever way you want to describe what this thing is, this game somehow or another I slowly becoming more accustomed to calling it a game now in a, in a way yes. it's, it's so thin to, to me it's, it's so yes. thin that um, and I, this is really simple this, this to me now is so simple but the latest manifestation of this whole reality or, or the way that I perceive it it's so simple for me in that when, uh, if you're happy and if you're contented, grand, that's fine. I mean, everything flows and there's no real thinking about things. But it's only when the shit hits the fan and you become depressed or whatever, anxious yeah. about something. That's when all this kind of spiritual stuff kicks in or whatever alternative methods of bringing yourself back to yourself. Mm. And I have found myself that the... Um, that it is quite a simple shift in your awareness. Oh, and it's not so good. much a simple shift in your awareness, it's just opening up what's already there. I'm just really responding to what you're saying, really. Yes. Um, it is already there, and it's a matter of just clicking into that. And it's taken me a good while to realise how simple in some ways it is to make that click, but the complications are the programming. The programming is so... But the click can also be just a moment of objectivity. A moment of objectivity. Where you where, see the condition. Yes. Yeah. It doesn't have such an emotional hold on no, you. No, it doesn't. Because the... the, the, um, the you, could I call it... I think I will call it your true nature. Yes. Um, your true nature doesn't require a lot of... Um, it's not too much effort oh. involved in... Allowing your true nature to say what happened. It's, there's not very much to say in any particular situation. It's quite simple, you know. Yes, it's um, allowing it through I, almost. Yeah, I love at the moment. I love the uh, the line. What do you want? Okay, you yeah. find yourself in a situation that you feel you're feeling anxious. Yes. No, the, and and focusing on what about, you don't want. There's something about all the techniques. Yes. In my in my experience. In my experience, you can actually feel that, you know, you need... Well, number one, if you do feel that you're in the shit, yeah. you are going to tend to think that a teacher, um, that the sun, moon and stars shines from their blip. Yes. <laughs> Beep. Yeah. There's that, bit of a, there's, there's that bit of a hurdle to get over, that you can try and listen to what they're saying and take and allow your perception of it to shine through rather than taking everything they say as being gospel. Yes. Um, and I just, it has taken me a while to kind of settle into my own kind of stride on what all yes. the books are saying. There's so much out there. And it can be, to before it becomes your own, as you say, yeah. it's, um, it's still an externalisation. It's still a part of somebody coming to you, uh, you going to someone for help. Yes. Or you saying, right, I think that idea rings true for me, I might apply that, or that person helped alleviate my feelings, I'll yes. trust them. 
and for it to become gosh, a fantastic grandfather clock going in the background. <laughs> I better check check the food. All right.